This Inkbird ITC 308 made this fermented and semi-dried salami, which gave me this unbelievable pepperoni pizza. Let's start from the beginning and take a look at this sleek packaging. Pretty easy to open. Boom, the user manual right on top. Then the device itself is pretty much all one unit. Very nice. Got the power cord, the outlets for cooling and heating, and of course the temperature probe. Not going to lie, this looks pretty easy to use. Even says plug and play right at the top there. But let's take a deeper dive into how to set this Inkbird unit up. Okay, so now that it is turned on, uh, the ITC 308, um, it is in Celsius, right? So uh, I would say the first thing I need to do is actually uh, change that to Fahrenheit. So what I'll do is hold set the set button for three seconds. One, two, three, boom. And then we can toggle through the back end, which we'll get to these settings in a moment here. Uh, but first I want to change it to Celsius or Fahrenheit. Just going to toggle down to Fahrenheit, hold set again for three seconds, boom. Okay, so now it shows you the set value of 77, which this is set at 77, and then the process value of which the thermometer is actually reading, 75.6. And we are in the back end now. The next option is the temperature set. Let's set it to 75 and program that. So hold it down for three seconds, and now you can see the set value is at 75. Uh, the temperature gauge is reading 75.8. So let's just use that right now for the uh, next couple settings that we toggle through. Okay, so you're gonna hold the set button down for three more seconds to re-enter the back end here. Press set again, we have HD. HD stands for the heating differential value, right? So if uh, the degrees, um, the ambient de temperature goes up three degrees, then the cooling light should turn on with the actual, uh, whatever is plugged into the cooling device here, whether it be a, uh, a wine cooler in my frit, or in my case, or a AC unit or some kind of cooling device that will click on to bring it back down to 75 degrees uh, within three degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's press this again to go back. So we have, it's set at 75. The heating differential is uh, three. The cooling differential is also three. So let's say uh, it, it gets a little uh, cold, colder than, so it goes down to 72. Then the heating, um, whatever you have plugged in, whether it's a space heater uh, is plugged in, it will click on and then it will, it should bring it right back up to 75. And this is how it kind of toggles back and forth between the uh, set value and then the perceived value and these settings here. Now, this will be alarm high. Uh, so the alarm will go off if it reaches 248 degrees, but that is way too high for what we're doing right now. So uh, as like a little test, we can, let's see, we have it set at 75 degrees, right? And then we have a, uh, the alarm, we'll set the alarm at 70, 78, 79, 78 or 79. Let's go 79, press set. Okay, perfect. So I'm thinking maybe if I hold the thermometer here for a moment, hopefully my palm will raise the process value up here and an alarm will go off just like that. Okay, you can press set, boom. And it will go off alarm high. You see it's going up and up. And this uh, clicks on after uh, the three degrees um, that we set it. Okay, and now this is the compressor delay. So sometimes uh, the your compressor is maybe a little frozen over or it's defrosting. Um, when the ink bird notices that it uh, is going to need to turn it on to cool things down. And so um, if you know 
your unit needs maybe a minute or two to click on, uh, then you are just giving the Inkbird the knowledge of that to know that it needs a little bit of time before it starts sending off alarms or you know keep trying to spark that thing to turn on. So my, uh, my cooler turns on immediately um, even if it is in a defrost cycle. So I'm just going to put zero. So we'll press set on that one. Okay, so we'll go to the next thing here. So the next one is going to be CA. So that's, that stands for calibration. So what we'll have to do is actually hang this up in my wine fridge um, for maybe like 15 minutes. Um, turn the wine fridge on, see what it is reading, see what the ink bird is reading. And then I also have a, a, a small temperature reader, temperature and humidity reader uh, in my cooler that will also give a reading. So we will see how close this gets to that. Um, so I'm not going to set that right now. The next step is, I mean, it's pretty dang clear to see in this plug here, you have the cooling and the heating. Uh, and let's go set this up now um, and plug in the space heater and the wine fridge into this. And we can hopefully start hanging up some meat to ferment. And I'm going to hook it up to my wine fridge here. This is where I have cured meats for maybe six or seven years now. Now we are going to set this up with this and I'm just gonna show you how I do that. So first I open it up. In this video, I'm going to do uh, a pepperoni. What I want to do that I've never done before is actually ferment the pepperoni in here. Uh, I want that high tang, uh, the acidity uh, that you get in like an American pepperoni. I'm going to semi dry it uh, and then I'm going to put it on a pizza and I hope it's going to be freaking phenomenal. I'll set this back way up. It's pretty easy. I have a plug right here and I'm just gonna plug this into the wall. Like so, I simply just take this. I'm just, I'm just gonna hang it in here. It has the cooling uh, section right here. Take the cord to the wine fridge and plug that in like that. What we need to do is reprogram this for the, the wine cooler. Let's say to, let's just check this out, 45 degrees. Hold the set button to program it. So as soon as I hold it, you see that turned on cooling. I need to close this door um, and then we'll be back in a couple minutes here. Now it has been about an hour and what we are checking for is calibration. So the temperature up front on this little reader says it is 50 degrees. And the temperature up here says it's 43 degrees. So I know that the temperature or the thermometer is in the back. It's that little square back there. So it's obviously going to read much colder. And then this is up towards the front. Um, so it's a little bit warmer. So I think right now it's, it's reading. It showed us before we opened this 47 degrees and the thermometer is in the middle of the actual wine cabinet. I think I'm actually just going to leave it as it is right now. I think we're looking good to go on this. I don't think we need to uh, calibrate it. So now I am going to uh, make some pepperoni uh, to ferment. That's gonna be the next step. So let's go make some stuff. Okay, so now that we have made the actual pepperoni, we are going to ferment them. I have never fermented in this before, so we are going to find out together if it actually works. So what I want to do is ferment it at 85, and I have the space heater right here that I'm gonna put in here. So I have it set at 85. The heating differential, I'll just put 
by three degrees. The cooling differential also put by three degrees. The high alarm will be 95 and the low alarm will be freezing. That's it. I'm gonna hold it down, set those parameters. And now I'm going to take the heater. I'm just gonna put this uh, space heater in there. And now you can see that it's actually turned on. I can feel the heat. Now we're going to hang the pepperoni. I have the um, pepperoni on this sheet pan here, and I am just going to slide it right in here to ferment. It should take only about 12 hours if everything goes correctly. Uh, the reason I keep it on the sheet pan and don't hang it is because uh, it is going to drip a lot. After it ferments, I'm going to actually hang them up. We're going to do the semi-dried one on this video, cook it on a piece of pizza. But the first step is to get that fermentation down. This should take about 12 hours. Now it has been about 12 hours since I have put the pepperoni in to ferment. It looks like it's been holding a pretty consistent uh, temperature of 85. I keep hearing it turning on uh, the wine fridge to cool things down, turning on the heater to heat things up to keep it pretty consistent, 85 degrees. Why don't we take a look and see how uh, the pepperoni is looking and uh, also test the pH to see if uh, it has dropped at all. Let's go check the pH of the tester chub. So that's looking really good. It already hit, just in those 12 hours, the 5.2. So that is perfect. I am super excited that uh, this worked for fermentation. That took 12 hours. So what we're gonna do now is actually reset this. We're going to put this back to about 45 degrees. We want to slow down fermentation and uh, we're looking for uh, a drying, a slow drying atmosphere now. After the fermentation, I'm going to drop the temperature setting down to 45 degrees Fahrenheit with a heating differential of one degree and a cooling differential of two degrees. Now it is set to 45 degrees. I can already hear the wine fridge going down and I have them measured now, just one and two and I have their weights and I will be in the next couple days uh, weighing them to see um, how much they have lost. We're gonna do a check-in tomorrow and the next day and see uh, how they progress and I'm super excited about it. So three days later, the Inkbird has kept the wine fridge hovering perfectly at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. The temp and humidity reader is showing exactly that as well with the average of 45 degrees with the humidity around 73%. It's now weighing in at 403 grams from the original weight of 450 grams. So that comes out to a total of an 11% weight loss. And the carryover fermentation is at 4.7 from when I stopped fermentation at 5.3 pH, which is right about the max acidity of what I want. So now I'm going to place the pepperoni in a food grade plastic bag, stick it with an oven thermometer and dunk it in a water bath heated to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. About an hour later, I'll pull it out and dunk it in a cold water bath to stop it from cooking and to tighten up the casing so it doesn't shrivel. Afterwards, I'll put it in my refrigerator on a rack to let it kind of dry up the surface again. And after 24 hours, look how stunning that is. Now it's time to cut it open and check out the bind. Unreal. I am so happy with that. The bind looks fantastic and I can already smell the paprika and the fermentation tang. Let's cut some up for a pizza. Wow, wow, wow. Tell me that doesn't look intriguing. And seriously, it tastes great, even like this. We're gonna keep it a simple pizza with marinara, mozzarella, and the star of the show, pepperoni. Into the oven for about 20 minutes. The smell is wild right now. The browning cheese and the glistening of the rendered fat is making my mouth water. 
And don't forget about the main event of the show, the pepperoni. Let's cut into this and eat it. Mmm. Mmm. Phenomenal. Seriously, I am so happy I made this. I was successfully able to ferment and dry this beautiful pepperoni for this beautiful pizza here with the Inkbird ITC 308. If you guys want any more information on this Inkbird ITC 308, the product link is going to be in the description of the video. Guys, it's all for the love of me. Matt the Butcher, out.